Hello and welcome back to my Fish Keeping 101 series. Episode 1 was all about picking the fish. This episode is all going to focus around the tank size. Now yes, that will build off of last video, so if you haven't seen it, click here now to go back and watch it. But this can also be viewed as a standalone video as I'll be explaining why I picked these two size tanks for first time fish keepers. Now I know when you walk into a fish store, there's so many tanks to choose from, especially if it's a local fish store, they might have more than what a PetSmart or Petco might have. Being that this is more for the beginner fish keeper, which is probably gonna start out at Petco or PetSmart, tip I'll give you for when you're picking your tank is get the kits that they sell at the store. Now what I mean by that is PetSmart sells kits for the fish tanks that come with the tank, they come with a hang on the back filter, they come with a heater, and they also come with a thermometer. Now you get the heater in the 10 gallon size and up, which is perfect since we're starting with 10 gallons anyway. It's one flat rate for everything, and if you crunch the numbers, you actually end up saving a little money than if you buy everything piece by piece. These are personally what I've used, which means I know that they're at least a little bit tried and tested. All my heaters are PetSmart, all my tanks are PetSmart, all my hang on the back filters are PetSmart, all my tanks are PetSmart, and that means all the hoods and lights are also PetSmart brand, and I have no problem glowing plants, no problem with the filters, no problem with anything. So my tip to save a little money and just to get everything in one nice neat box would be buy the kits, buy the aquarium kits that your pet store has. Whether it be PetSmart, Petco, just buy the bundled kit, it's usually a little bit cheaper. And then you don't have to go through the task of picking out hang on the back filters or other filters. And this again is because this series is tailored to those who are just starting in the fish keeping hobby, just to help them get started in their hobby. And then once they figure out that they like a certain brand of tank or a certain brand of heater or filter or whatever else you can think of that you'd be buying for this hobby, like fish food or something. I just wanted to remind people that that's what this series is about. And it's not just about, you know, advanced stuff. It's about beginner basic stuff to get people into the hobby. Now I picked these two sizes specifically because normally if you're a first time fish keeper you don't want to go, at least I didn't, and you want to go super big right off the bat. You want to get something smaller to make sure you're going to like keeping fish. So that said, I picked two sizes, one smaller, one more that I would recommend, but I wanted to give a smaller and a decent-ish size that you can do some more things with. So the first tank size that I'm going to recommend for a first time fish keeper is a 10 gallon aquarium. Now this is just a standard 10 gallon, nothing fancy about it. Now the reason I'm suggesting a 10 gallon is because it does give you the option to get some more smaller schooling fish like the Harlequin Resbora or the Zebra Danios mentioned in the last video or the Beta Fish. 10 gallon, you could do the Mollies in, but if they start breeding, the tank's not gonna get big enough and they do get slightly bigger than those other fish. So for the 10 gallon tank, I would recommend personally starting out with just a Beta Fish. 10 gallon is going to be more than enough room for the beta fish to be happy in. And then as you keep it and learn more about how to properly take care of an aquarium, then three, four, five months down the road, if you want to add some more fish, throw in some Harlequin Rasboras, some Black Neon Tetris, and some Emerald Eye Rasboras. You can add these smaller schooling fish so that there's more going on in your tank and it'll give the beta a little distraction and keep him busy a little bit. I recommend the 10 over a 5 to start out for a couple reasons. Number one, that ability to be able to add other fish and things to your tank later on down the road once you've started keeping longer. Two, having a slightly larger volume of water allows you to, if you forget to water change one week, it's not going to increase things that are bad as rapidly as if you only had a 5 gallon tank. So it gives you a little leeway with maintenance but not as much as the bigger tank and when i say a little i mean a little like it's a 10 gallon tank so things can still go awry very quickly but not having something smaller like a five or two and a half or just a gallon fish bowl where things will go bad really quickly at least the 10 gives you some kind of small little tiny safety net whereas the smaller size tanks if stuff goes wrong you really usually can't compensate quick enough another reason i would suggest 10 over a smaller size if you're just starting out would also be that it does give you that option to decorate it a bit more and add plants if you want to try your hand at that yes it can be done in the smaller tanks but you'll have a little bit more length to work with and probably a little bit more width to work out as well It'll also afford your fish a little more room to swim around, especially with the schooling fish like the Danios and the Harlequin Asporas. They're going to want a bit more room. 
will lead me into t stocking options for the 10 gallon fish tank. Again, personally, I'm going to say start out with the beta fish and work your way up. But if you want to start with something that's not the beta fish, I would say start with the harlequin rasboras. You can get a group of six of these fish for your 10 gallon tank. That's probably going to sound like a lot of fish, but they stay relatively small. They don't produce that much waste, so as long as you're good on your food and everything else, you'll be fine. The other option would be getting some danios, and again, you can keep those without a heater. If you keep your ambient temperature a little warm-ish, around like the 68-ish, they'll be fine. Uh, you can get a group of six as well. They're a little more active, though. If you do choose to go with the beta route, get the beta first. See how you like keeping a fish. If you can handle the maintenance of a tank, if you can handle the feeding and all the daily routine and whatnot that comes with keeping a fish. Wait a month or two, then go back to the fish store and get yourself a schooling fish. Get yourself a harlequin rasboras. You got the beta fish, you can add five to six harlequin rasboras and they'll have a nice schooling and you'll have the beta fish for a nice pop of color. And depending on what color your beta fish is, there'll be a nice contrast between the harlequins and your beta fish. And pretty much any of the smaller rasboras will also work with the beta. Um, I personally have emerald eye rasboras with mine, which are like a grayish green hued fish, which I think look kind of cool. They're not readily available at pet stores though, so I'm going to say don't go out looking for them because you might not find them. But yeah, someone's starting out, get two easy fish, get the beta, get the harlequin rasboras, and you have a nice tank right there, depending on how you decor it up and whatnot. You can also go the route of zebra danios, and then maybe getting another type of danio that's got a nice splash of color. I know people don't like glowfish, but 10 gallon tank, you could get a few different color glowfish danios. I've owned glowfish. I don't see a problem with glowfish, but I can understand why some people are a bit apprehensive about owning them. But if you want to do a 10 gallon with danios, get yourself a mixed color of the glowfish danios. They're going to be the same tank requirements as the zebras, so you'll be off to a good start anyway. Now moving on, I'm going to suggest the second size as the 20 gallon tank. Now personally, I would recommend anyone starting, if you have the space and you have the little extra cash, go with the 20 over the 10. First reason I'm saying 20 over the 10 is the same reason for getting the 10 over the 5. It gives you more wiggle room with water parameters if you forget water changes and your tank maintenance. The larger volume you have, the more room for error you have if you forget to do something also gives you more course correction if something does go wrong it's out of your control the other good thing about the 20 gallon is that it'll afford you more space to add more fish in a more large variety of fish 20 gallon i think personally is one of the good sizes if you want to start keeping a community tank if you want to if you like community tanks and want to get into that then you yes you can get a larger size tank but personally i think a 20 gallon is a nice size for someone that's starting out that wants to go into it and say, hey, you know what? I like all these kinds of fish. Let me get a tank that I can incorporate different kinds of fish in and keep. So if you pick the 20 option and you want to keep a community or even a species only tank, you could do a species only tank with tetras, wild betas, guppies, mollies, rasboras. Personally, I like community tanks, so I'm going to focus more on those. So a community tank is just, you've got a bunch of fish in a tank it's a hodgepodge of fish my community tank has fish from asia central america north america south america everywhere that i can keep fish in a lower ph so if you want to do a community tank i would again recommend the harlequin rasboras as a good beginner fish especially if you're cycling the tank fish in they'll again be able to survive it you can also add a beta as well in a community tank i know a lot of people say you can't but yes you can i've done it in multiple tanks and there's been no problems but you also have to remember that every fish is different every fish has its own personality so what works for every some person might not work for you so if you notice something going on with your beta fish or you notice fish hurting it you might have to get a backup tank to have for that fish so let's see stocking options for 20 if you're going to build a community tank i'm going to say start off with a school of five harlequin rasboras one beta fish maybe get a school of five or six black neon tetras in there that's a nice solid base right there as you evolve in the tank and the tank gets more mature so as i'm editing i realize i should probably explain what i mean by that so what i mean by more mature and more established is the longer you have a tank set up the more of an ecosystem built up in the tank so when i say more mature I mean like start with these fish and then like six months later, maybe four or five months later, you can come in and you can add a bit more slowly. Like you're going to slowly over time add more and more to your tank and you'll have yourself a nice little community tank. Anyway, let's get back to the video. You could add in some Nerite snails or some ram's horn snails. You could add in some mollies if you want. They will be able to be kept in a community tank as well. I would say just try and get the males if you can. You could add a bristlenose pleco as well. Those could be kept in 20 gallons. 
That'll give you a nice contrast of color there. I'm steering you away from going with Tetras because Tetras can be known to be a little nippy with fins. And if you get a beta that's got the bigger flowy fins, the Tetras might nip at it. If you don't have a spare tank, you won't be able to keep those. But you could also just keep a community tank with a bunch of different Tetras in it. You could get a school of 10 Neon Tetras and 5 Serpe Tetras and 5 Black Neon Tetras or get Cardinal Tetras or any Tetra really. You can have a nice community tank of just Tetras. Now they're all different kinds so you're going to have different colors and all this going on. Again, all the fish that I mentioned so far you can get at your Petco and your Pet Smarts. And of course, moving forward, I'll go into more depth detail on how to maintain these tanks properly with filtration, heaters, and all that stuff. But for now, this is just the basic keeping fish for the first time, and you needed help picking out what size aquarium to go with. So to recap, personally, I would say if you're new to fish keeping, go with a 10 or 20 gallon, depending on how much space you have. If you have the room, definitely get the 20 gallon tank. It's just going to afford you more variety in what you can do with it and more leeway if things go awry. And you can just keep more fish in the 20 than you could in the 10. And who doesn't want that? Like, come on, we're fish keepers, aren't we? As always, thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. And then leave me a comment telling me what I can do differently to fix it in the future. Also, just leave a comment. Say hi. Say something. I'll respond. And now this part's not going to be fish related. But if you like gaming or you like card games, specifically Pokemon right now, I uh, started a business. It's called Battle Frontier. We have a website. It's battle-frontier or battle-frontier.com. Uh, right now we're just selling Pokemon products, but I'm hoping to expand and do more with that. Uh, with that, I'm also streaming weekly on Twitch at 8 o'clock Eastern every week on Wednesdays. Uh, it'll either be me gaming or I'm opening up products that people have bought and want me to open live on stream for them and then send to them. If you want to give that a check out, that's twitch.tv slash lefty3213a. And side note, that's how I save my username, so I don't have to say all the numbers and really quick. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, thank you guys for the continued support on the live streams every week with Ed. That's greatly appreciated. I'm hoping I can get videos out to you guys more often. Anyway, I will catch you guys around the interwebs. See ya. Or should we say intertank, since we're technically fish keepers? I don't know. I'll get back to you guys. Anyway, see you next time, guys.